methods. Let's look at one of the uh, programs of this one dimensional arrays. In the previous videos, we have seen one dimensional array to count those values. Now let's go for some real life situations. Now suppose if I ask you to search a number in a given list of n numbers. Let this array store n numbers. Now apart from this array input, I'll have one more additional input. And that additional input is going to be the search number. So let's see this particular logic and then we'll look at the code. Suppose if I had to read, first what I'll do is I'll read length that is n, that is the first step which I'm supposed to do. So I'm, I'm going to ask the user that how many numbers does he want to enter. Once the numbers have been entered, then I'll ask him to enter the numbers. So I'll say read numbers now. Now in this, I'll have a set of elements that is n elements being read into an array and stored. In the previous programs, we had been starting the processing operation immediately after this. But for such a program, I need to have one more additional input that I had to read the number to be searched. Let me say read the number to be searched. Now let this particular search number be x. So my task is now to search whether this x exists in this particular number or not. For that, what I'll do is I'll go for a comparison. Assume that I have a set of numbers in this fashion. As, as we proceed with this particular video, definitely I'll take some real, uh, example and illustrate that. But let's go concentrate on the logical part. So in this logical part, what I'll do is I'll go for searching a number in this number. Suppose if I say that this is my x, what I need to do is I need to take this particular x and go to compare all the numbers in this particular array. x, does it match with this particular array? or is the first element of the array that is a of 0 match with x. If a of 0 is going to match with x, then what I need to do is I need to stop this particular search operation. Stop this particular search operation and then I am supposed to quit and say that the number has been found. So it means that there is a possibility that the number which you are searching might be the first number itself. So in that case, I need to search and if a comparison is found, if a comparison is found, I need to say stop at this point, don't go ahead with the comparison because there is no fun in searching that particular number when it has been found at the first instant. On the other hand, if this particular a of 0 doesn't match with x, then go with a of 1. If a of 1 match with x. So if a of 1 matches with x, it means that the number is found again stop this particular operation. In the worst case, your number might be found in the last instant. a of n minus 1 is it equal to equal to x. If you say a of n minus 1 is equal to equal to x, stop this particular operation. In the worst to worst case, your number x might not belong to one of these categories. In that case, I should say that the number is not found. So it means that whenever you complete the operation till the end, you were able to scan the entire array starting the first element 0 till n minus 1, then the number is not found. If you find the number at any point, it means that you are going to quit. For that, what I'll do is to quit in the mid, I'll be using an instruction called as break. And at the end, I'll ask a question, how do I quit? So for that, what I'll do is, I'll take a flag variable, let's say flag as k equals to 0. At any point when the number is going to match with x, a of 0 equal to x or a of 1 equals to x or a of 2 equals to x, whenever the number is found as a match, I'll change this particular flag as k equals to 1. At any point, your k might match with, k will be set with 1, automatically quit. So outside this, what I'll do is I'll ask, is k equals to 0? If k is equals to 0, we'll say number is not found. It means that the value of k has been not changed. At any point, if it gets a match, immediately what I'll do is I'll change the value of k to 1 and then I'll say quit. So the value of k indicates how you exit this particular loop. If k is 0, if k maintains a value of 0 till the last, it means that none of the time the condition has been matched. 
at any point when k is 1 you are supposed to say that you are going to quit and check the value of k let's see the program and then i'll let you know how exactly this particular program is used in our real life situation let's look at the program for this particular task now as usual i would include the header files here a of 50 is used to store the array elements the numbers n is going to be the length of elements i is going to be the loop variable and x is now the additional input which is used for this program this x indicates that the value is the number which is supposed to be searched or the value which is supposed to be searched and k indicates the flag variable how many numbers now let's take an example at this place assume that i have entered n as say 5 i'll say how many numbers i'll say 5 numbers now i have to ask the user to enter the numbers so in response to this i'll read these numbers into this particular scanner so i'll read five numbers in this particular array now let's take up an example and illustrate these with five different numbers say 7 12 9 8 and say 1 and now the additional input which is for this program i have to ask the user to enter the number to be searched so let me say that i wish to search say 9 let's say this as x so now before i go ahead and start searching let's set the flag as a zero initially k equals to zero follow the instructions carefully one by one with a real life example with the illustration with some numbers that will be much more clear i'm executing the program one by one instruction by instruction so first we read the count then we read these numbers and then we read the number to be searched that is x so now this particular x need to be compared with the elements of the array so what i'll do is i'll go from a of zero till a of four that is a of n minus one n is five i'll check is a of zero equal to equal to x if the number matches then stop if the number doesn't match don't say that the number is not found because there are chances there is a possibility that the number might appear in the later part hence what it is you go ahead with the comparison so it says 7 equal to equal to x no if no it means that the number may exist at the later stage since there should not be any else go back and compare the next value 12 equal to equal to x true false so 12 is not equal to equal to 9 so then compare 9 equal to equal to 9 true if 9 equals equals to 9 then change the value of flag to 1 change the value of k equals to 0 to 1 and then use a break instruction what a break does many of you might be under a misconception that break is used to break a set of curly brackets no break is always going to transfer the control outside the looping structure where your loop while or for or do while reside so here a break instruction which is at this place is going to take the control outside this particular loop at this place since at k equals to 1 break and quit so 1 equal to equal to 0 is the number 1 equal to equal to 0 so if, if the number is 1 equal to equal to 0 is false false in sense go into the else part and say number is found so 9 is found if the number doesn't exist for example let me take one more example with say x equals to say uh, 11 let's set k equals to 0 one more time now compare this particular a, a of x that is sorry a of 0 a of 1 a of 2 and so on with x 7 equal to equal to 11 false 12 equal to equal to 11 false 9 equal to equal to 11 false 8 equal to equal to 11 false 1 equal to equal to 11 false all the time the condition is false means k equals to 0 so if 0 equal to 0 number is not found for 11 i get a message as number not found and for 9 i got the number as found so here i had used this particular flag variable to indicate that this is going to be the end of the program right so we have searched a given number in list of n numbers so here when k x was 9 we we got the number so when x was 9 k was 1 1 equal to equal to 0 not then in that case number is found if x is 11, 11 equal to equal to, uh, um, the number was searched, none of the time the condition was true, hence k was 0, so at k equals 0, 0 equals 0, number is not found. So I can now search a given example. Now, now if I have to relate this with a real life situation, you have used this particular program every time when you get your exam results. Whenever your exam results are out, what do you do? 
you uh, open up the website of the university and then you go to the exam results and then you enter a number that is your roll number and on the background the university web server it runs a program which searches whether your number exists in the passing number list or not if it exists in the passing number list it says you have passed if the number doesn't exist in that particular list it says you are fail which you are not supposed to every time make sure that your number appears always in that particular passing list of university list so this is one real life situation where i had used the search program for searching the results of this particular uh, uh, exams now i can modify this particular code for one more task what if if i say that i have to search a number and display its position how to search a number and display its position now see the value of i can itself be the indicator of this particular position how let's check this trace out the value of i when x is 9 and trace out the value of i when x is 11 when x is 9 initially i is 0 7 equal to equal to 9 false then i becomes 1 12 equal to equal to 9 false then i becomes 2 9 equal to equal to 9 true true in the sense we quit with what value of i do we quit with the value of i as 2 but when 11 exists the value of i is 0 then goes to 1 then goes to 2 then goes to 3 then goes to 4 and finally goes to 5 where the number doesn't exist So even you can use i as a flag indicator. When i reaches to the value of n, the number is not found. When i has quit somewhere in the mid, definitely the number is found. So if the number is found, i indicates the position of that particular number with respect to arrays, and i plus one indicates the position of the number with respect to the user. So if I had to do this, so only the last instruction is going to change. what is that instruction which you want to change so here i'll say printf number is found at i'll say position percentage d comma i plus 1 if we change this instruction now the program is going to search as well as display the position and in the previous case it has only searched a given number so this program helps us to understand the concepts of say a, a, a flag variable understands help it will help you to even make the concepts of break instruction much more clear you can even use this particular program to find the total occurrences if uh, i wish to know how many times this 9 has occurred in that case rather than using k as a flag you can use k as a counter so what will be changes in this particular code so let this particular k be a counter zero so here ransing k equals to 1 it will say k plus plus if the number is found don't stop so it means that you have to eliminate this particular break the number of times k gets incremented tells you how many times this particular number has occurred in this list the same program can be one modified to find the total occurrences so we have done three programs in a single program number to search number to search and its position so number to search was just by using a flag variable k number to search and its position is using the i variable and the total occurrence of the number is by using the variable k not as a flag but as a counter so analyze all these three programs write these three programs one more time separate separately and then try to analyze with these real life examples with these numbers play with these numbers definitely you will feel much more comfortable thank you